We continue today with chapter 22, Weakness and Defensiveness. How does one overcome illusions? Surely not by force or anger, nor by opposing them in any way. Merely by letting reason tell you that they contradict reality. They go against what must be true. The opposition comes from them and not reality. Reality opposes nothing. What merely is needs no defense and offers none. Only illusions need defense because of weakness. And how can it be difficult to walk the way of truth when only weakness interferes? You are the strong one in this seeming conflict, and you need no defense. Everything that needs defense you do not want for anything that needs defense will weaken you. Consider what the ego wants defense is for. Always to justify what goes against the truth, flies in the face of reason and makes no sense. Can this be justified? What can this be except an invitation to insanity to save you from the truth? And what would you be saved from but what you fear? Belief in sin needs great defense and at enormous cost. All that the Holy Spirit offers must be defended against and sacrificed. For sin is carved into a block out of your peace and laid between you and its return. Yet how can peace be so fragmented? It is still whole and nothing has been taken from it. See how the means and the material of evil dreams are nothing. In truth, you and your brother stand together with nothing in between. God holds your hands, and what can separate whom he has joined as one with him? It is your father whom you would defend against, yet it remains impossible to keep love out. God rests with you in quiet, undefended and wholly undefending, for in this quiet state alone is strength and power. Here can no weakness enter, for here is no attack, and therefore no illusions. Love rests in certainty. Only uncertainty can be defensive, and all uncertainty is doubt about yourself. How weak is fear, how little and how meaningless, how insignificant before the quiet strength of those whom love has joined. This is your, quote, enemy, a frightened mouse that would attack the universe. How likely is it that it will succeed? Can it be difficult to disregard its feeble squeaks that tell of its omnis omnipotence? and would drown out the hymn of praise to its creator that every heart throughout the universe forever sings as one? Which is stronger? Is it this tiny mouse or everything that God created? You are not joined together by this mouse, but by the will of God. And can a mouse betray whom God has joined? If you but recognize how little stands between you and your awareness of your union, be not deceived by the illusions it presents of size and thickness, weight, solidity, and firmness of foundation. Yes, to the body's eyes it looks like an enormous, solid body, immovable as a, as a mountain. Yet within you is a force that no illusions can resist. This body only seems to be immovable. This force is irresistible in truth. What then must happen when they come together? Can the illusion of immovability be long defended from what is quietly passed through and gone beyond? Forget not when you feel the need arise to be defensive about anything. You have identified yourself with an illusion and therefore feel that you are weak because you are alone. This is the cost of all illusions, not one but rest on the belief that you are separate, not one that does not seem to stand heavy and solid and immovable 
between you and your brother, and not one that truth cannot pass over lightly and so easily that you must be convinced, in spite of what you thought it was, that it is nothing. If you forgive each other, this must happen, for it is your unwillingness to overlook what seems to stand between you that makes it look impenetrable and defends the illusion of its immovability. And from the workbook, Lesson 178 God is but love, and therefore so am I. Let not my mind deny the thought of God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. I am entrusted with the gifts of God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Amen.